this is Preeti from Analytics India magazine and in today's video we will be talking about what exactly is machine learning. So let's get started. Whether or not you know it, odds are that machine learning powers applications that you use every day, says Bill Brook, the VP of Engineering at Veri. Machine learning has revolutionized countless industries. It's the underlying technology for many apps in your smartphone, from virtual assistant like Siri to predicting traffic updates with Google Maps. Let's take a real life example to understand it better. An executive's guide to AI. The report highlights how machine learning was used to solve a problem at Beth Israel Medical Center. The problem statement was that its operating room capacity was stretched thin. Machine learning using data from a million patients, including OR times of the past, procedures done, and patients' disease, gender, age, morbidities, medications, etc. determines how much OR time is needed for any given patient. The medical center freed up to 30% OR capacity as a result. This is not an unbelievable feat, but it created a tangible impact and this is just one of the examples. Moreover, for most enterprises, machine learning is a common form of AI in use today. Let's go ahead and take a look at the definition of machine learning. Machine learning is the study of computer algorithms that improve automatically through experience. It is seen as a subset of artificial intelligence. Machine learning algorithms build a mathematical model based on a simple data known as training data in order to make predictions or decisions without being explicitly programmed to do so. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the machine learning approaches. Machine learning approaches are technically divided into three broad categories depending on the nature of the signal or feedback available to the learning system. The first one being supervised learning. The computer is presented with example inputs and their desired outputs given by a teacher and the goal is to learn a general rule that maps inputs to outputs. Let's take an example. You want to train a machine to help you predict how long it would take you to drive home from your workplace. Here, you start by creating a set of labeled data. This data includes weather conditions, time of the day, holidays. All these details are your inputs. The output is the amount of time it took to drive back home on that specific day. You instinctively know that if it's raining outside, it's going to take you longer to get home. But the machine needs data and statistics. Let's see now how you can develop a supervised learning model of this example which will help the user to determine the commute time. The first thing you require is to create a training set. This training set will contain the total commute time and corresponding factors like weather, time, etc. Based on this training set, your machine might see there is a direct relation between the amount of rain and time you will take to get home. So it ascertains that the more it rains, the longer you will be driving to get back to your home. Your machine may find some of the relationship with label data. This is the start of your data model. It begins to impact how rain impacts the way people drive and that is your supervised learning. Moving on to unsupervised learning. No labels are given to the learning algorithm, leaving it on its own to find structure in its input. Unsupervised learning can be a goal in itself or a means towards an end. Let's take an example. Assume that we want to predict how capable an applicant is in repayment of the loan from the perspective of the bank. Here, we need to help the bank set up a machine learning system so that each loan can be given to the applicants who can repay the loan. We need a lot of information about each application to make predictions. A few important attributes about applicants are the applicant's average monthly income, debt, credit history and so on. Typically, however, banks collect much more information from applicants when taking their applications. Not all of it is relevant for predicting an applicant's credit risk score. For instance, does an applicant's age make any difference while deciding whether the applicant can repay the loan? Is the applicant's gender important for determining the credit risk score? Probably not. It is important to understand that not every feature adds value to solving the problem. Therefore, eliminating these features is an essential part of machine learning and that would be your unsupervised learning. Let's take a look at reinforcement learning. A computer program interacts with a dynamic environment in which it must perform a certain goal. 
such as driving a vehicle or playing a game against an opponent. As it navigates its problem space, the program is provided feedback that analogues to rewards which it tries to maximize. Let's take an example to understand this better. Various papers have proposed deep reinforcement learning for autonomous driving. In self-driving cars, there are various aspects to consider, such as speed limits at various places, drivable zones, avoiding collisions, just to mention a few. For example, parking can be achieved by learning automatic parking policies. Lane changing can be achieved using queue learning, while overtaking can be implemented by learning an overtaking policy while avoiding collision and maintaining a steady speed thereafter. And those are the three machine learning approaches. With that, we come to the end of this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Analytics India magazine and follow this segment for everything related to data science. See you soon. Bye.